Samantha asked if we could run a poll for like each question. So if it's like A, B, C, or D, and that way when. How would I run a poll? Do I have a way to run a poll? There's an option on WhatsApp. We could have printed R. Oh, no, no, no. It's not on WhatsApp. It's on online quick. I just raised my hand. I think there's a couple. We'll just keep this simple. We'll just keep this simple. Veronica! What do you think? Spatial resolution, very good, right? Scatter does not affect spatial resolution. That's why when you change your grid, when you change your grid, right? It does not affect spatial resolution. Okay. Contrast, does scatter affect contrast? Yes. Yes. If scatter goes up, what happens to contrast? It goes down. Contrast goes down, very good. Occupational dose, does scatter affect occupational dose? Yes. Yes, right? Scatters are primary source of occupational dose. Good, so we just go answer. Yay, good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Carla, which of the following is affected by the focal spot size? Exposure, so number of x-rays. Spatial resolution. Why spatial resolution? I don't know, Mr. Francis. I'm glad you did. So I'm glad you did. You're halfway there. It is. It's important to know why. Right? So why does focal spot size affect spatial resolution? Because it decreases what? The so oh, I don't know. it decreases <laughs> right, that area of unsharpness, right? It makes the edges less fuzzy, right? So if you decrease the focal spot size, then that area of unsharpness also decreases. Your edges look sharper. That's why you have better spatial resolution. Right. Yes, Jay. Does that also contrast the beam divergence? where if you decrease distance or whatever, decrease the amount, mm -hmm. it, the beam diverges more? Mm -hmm. um, it is in some way related to beam divergence. Isn't exposure also affected? So exposure, exposure is not affected by focus. Because, uh, it's less number of x-rays if you decrease the yeah. So overall, you will still produce the same, same number of x-rays. Oh, question. Is this where yes. you get your test questions from? No. Because oh. I think that question was on the test, right? So I make the questions of myself. If it just happened to match one of these, you know that we're covering the same topics. Because oh. the question was like, word for word. Yeah, you said they plagiarized him. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, oh no, people are going on to quizzes to find, to study questions. See, nobody does that more. Question. Yes. So, like oh, just because what Monty was saying, mm -hmm. I thought it was the same thing. So, but mm -hmm. because um, it is the same number of X-rays, right? And mm -hmm. it is over a larger area. That's mm -hmm. why it would make it less sharp. Because so, um, for the larger mm -hmm. focus, right? So there's two things going on here. Number one, as far as focal spot size and sharpness goes. The reason why a larger focal spot size has more sharpness is because when we have so when this focal spot here is bigger, your divergence is coming from a wider area. So you have divergence coming from this corner, you have divergence coming from this corner. 
And so your area of unsharpness is also going to be wider. As you narrow down the focal spot size, the amount of area the divergence can come from is now smaller. Your area of unsharpness is also going to be smaller. The second thing was about exposure. Smaller focal spot size, you think, okay, less area, that means there's going to be less x-rays. But what's happening is that you're focusing the same number of electrons on a smaller area. So you're still going to get the same number of x-rays out. It's just that the x-rays are being produced in a much smaller region. Right? <coughs> Normally you have all these electrons, you can spread the electrons out. Now with the small focal spot size, all the electrons are going to the same place. The electrons are still going to produce x-rays. It's just going to be in a much smaller area, so the amount of heat produced is also going to go way up. Yeah, I was just trying to see if what I was thinking was right was right. Sorry. So in that case, uh, one more time, and I'll just give you like a yes oh, or no, no it's answer. Okay, it's okay. That was a good explanation, though. But um, yeah, no, it's okay. But I know like one slide, it said like, you know, because it's small, you have less so what does so why is this the case why when we talk about focal spot sizes so first of all when you say associated with lower mass settings what does that mean <coughs> does it mean that smaller focal spots will give you less exposure than bigger focal spots with everything else being equal. No. It's based on the sharpness. It just means, no, it doesn't mean. That. Right, so if all else is being held equal, the only thing that's changing is your focal spot size. The amount of x-rays are not changing. Change, right? So what does this mean? It this means mean that, that if you, have more you cannot use high exposure techniques with a small focal spot size. That's what I was gonna say. If you are, it just means that if you're using lower mass, usually you're gonna have a smaller focal spot and smaller fillings. Right, so if you're using like 100 kVp and 60 mass, you cannot use a small focal spot size because of the amount of heat that's gonna be produced. But if you're doing a finger, 15 kVp, one mass, really low technique. Now the heat's not gonna be a big concern. You can afford to use a smaller focal spot size and get that better resolution. Does that make sense? Yeah. <coughs> yes. Uh, I, yes. So on this chart, uh, yes. So the equal sign means it stays the same, no change. I already took a picture of that slide. So, when you say the same, what do you mean by the same? It's like she meant like the same chart. Uh, no, this is not the same chart. Uh, this chart is about primary beam and remnant, right? So your primary beam, your secondary beam. And okay. then the second chart here is about all of our other different factors, right? Exposure, brightness, contrast, resolution, magnification, okay. and distortion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright. So are we okay with this one here? Yes. Okay, so magnification, nothing to do with focal spot size, right? Magnification is sit and saw, right? Um, and of course OID. Exposure, not affected by focal spot size. Although if you're using lower exposure techniques, you would most likely use a smaller focal spot size. If you're using higher exposure techniques, you're likely to use a larger focal spot size. Like you're not going to use the hammer to push a tack in with it. <laughs> right. Depends, right? It would make sense. You just use a decreased focal spot. Yeah, so decreased focal spot is decreased. And then finally, contrast. Right, focal spot size does not affect our contrast. Contrast would depend on things like energy of the beam, KVP, or it might depend on reducing scatter, so grids or OID. 
So number of x-rays would not affect contrast. Because so quality would affect contrast, but not the quantity. Thank you. It's very hard to read. Will we say it tomorrow? Ooh. All right, let's go back to chapter 10. Um, Reagan. Uh, uh, read the question and then what is your best answer? Okay, with cassette-based digital PSP, right? Yeah. Our photostimulable phosphor plate reader, our PSP plate reader. Right? So processor, right? This is referring to the chemical processors. Those were used back in the film screen days. Mm -hmm. TFT, CCDs, what are these? Right, these are used for our direct and indirect DR, right? So I do believe plate reader should be the best answer. Long time ago. So when I repeat it back to you, it's not that it's going to be wrong or anything. I'm either making, I'm either checking to see if you're confident in your answer, or I'm asking you to maybe allow your answer. What is that a test question? You mind if we take picture of this? Because giving all these explanations. Well, it's a review. You can take a picture of it. Mm -hmm. You can take pictures of these. Although, don't, e don't expect these questions to show up on no, the exam. No, no, because this is no, the same. The concept is yes. so, yes. Feel free to take pictures of the explanation. Thanks. All right. Uh, ooh, transfer call. Well, this is uh, physics. Oh, you want to? Well, you want to study for Ms. Bonilla's class at the same time? Well, she oh, she well, 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 yes, iron. 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 Iron
So this is something you'll learn later on. That could be a bonus question. Okay, and yes, during. Can you say amen? Where is the technique yes. chart? All right, the technique chart, you're going to cover that with Ms. Bonilla, I believe. Okay, answer Ms. Bonilla, thanks. All right, let's keep going. Oh, was acquiring if you in the largest matrix size? Mm. The A. So matrix size. So this is stuff from so this is from last semester, yeah. right? Yeah. Matrix size means good image. I'm going with eight. Yeah. But yes, large matrix means high spatial yeah. resolution. So it's a better you see it better. has a, our best spatial right. resolution. Oh, very That's good. Bringing back that PRE one. Yeah. Mm. Okay, All right. <laughs> Ooh, okay, this is chapter yeah. 11. You like this? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, Emily, you oh. this one. That's right. That's so yes, right? We talked about how SID affects magnification. What about receptor exposure? How is this related to SID, Emily? Remember the law? Very good. Inverse square law. Great job. So those are the two answers. Good job. Let's see. Okay. Got some Ms. Pania questions here again. Resistance to electric flow is measured in ohms, right? Yes. Oh. All right. Let's see. So, Angelica, the selection, or sorry, go ahead and read this. The selection of a small filament causes what change to the size of the actual focal spot? Good, so we're going from our big filament down to our small filament. The small filament, or the filament size controls our focal spot size. Right? So smaller filament, smaller effective focal spot size, and smaller actual focal spot So small spot is small, size. large is large. Correct. Direct. So yes, filament and focal spot size are directly related. And so if we choose a small filament, what happens to our spatial resolution? Increases. More sharper. More sharp. Very good. Yes, more better. Better than. It's too fast. Hey. All right, All right Mansi. Um, ah. So we've got a mass question here. Speak a bit louder. Hmm? Well, read it for the whole class. What milliampere station would be used for an exposure with 0 0.6 seconds and 50 milliampere seconds? Good. So don't let the words confuse you. What are we trying to do? Oh, mass. Hmm? Do we have mass? No. We have seconds. Oh, we don't have. We have seconds. So I what? Have, uh, so oh, OK. So, That's right. So this is just a mass formula question. It's asking you, do you know the right M A times seconds equals mass? So you're missing M A right here, right? They're asking you what M A do you use? You have seconds, which is 0.6, mm -hmm. 
then you have 50, which is your mass. So you have x, right, your unknown, x times 0.6 equals 50. And then you just divide both sides by 0.6, and that will give you x, which is your milliamperes. So, very good. We're just using your basic mass equation, ma times seconds equals mass. So far, so good. Great job, guys. Charles. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll, sorry, we'll skip this one. This is uh, PRE1 again. All right, so heat units. Just as a review, remember that you need to memorize your heat units. So you actually know about generators now, right? Yes. Single phase generator, right? Heat unit of one, right? That's your correction factor. Yeah, 1.31? What's that? 1.31? No. No. Nope. So next one, oh. our three phase six pulse is 1.35. Oh, yeah, that was close. Mm -hmm. yeah. The next one, which is our three phase 12 pulse, oh, is 1.41. One. One. And then our final one, high frequency, is 1.45. Very good. So 1.35, 1. 1.41, 1. 1.45. You do need to know those numbers. I want to do this with the heat units. That is your correction factors, exactly. right, for your generators. By the way, what is the voltage ripple for a single phase generator? Ooh, 100%. 100%. 100%. 0 to 80 kV. What is the voltage ripple for a three phase six pulse? 14 percent. 14%. What is the voltage ripple for a three phase 12 pulse? 4%. 4%. And what about high frequency? 1%. 1, one or less than 1%. 79 to 80. So make sure you know those numbers for your generators. Good. So really all we do here is we multiply straight across. We have 300 milliamperes times 0.125 seconds. That gives us the mass. Multiply that by our KVP. And we multiply that by our correction factor, which is 1.45. That's high frequency, right? And when we do that, we get 3262. But you don't have it there. You don't have that. Right. So, report that question. Here. Yes, yes, report it. You'd be surprised how much it's around. Really? Yeah. No, I thought it was like, just. No, no, yeah, and they grade it. Uh, so you had. Like, even if you, if you get it wrong. Last time. Are they doing this for a grade? Do they just drop the lead from like a 96 to a 92? Wait, the seniors are doing this for a grade? Yes. This is like an entire semester of oh, shit. Is it um, MA times seconds times <laughs> It's MA times seconds times oh, times. times. We're going to send that to the It's all four of them. It was KVP times So, all right. Let's, let's just choose the closest one and see what happens. Okay. Now, I do notice that one of these is, does happen to be double this for some reason. Well, let me do Exactly double? Exactly double. Hmm, interesting. It is yeah. interesting. You got the right answer. Yeah. But I, I am, it should be 1.45. Yeah. 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 Does repeat it make it double? At the end it says repeat it. So you would get that originally. And it is repeated. Ah, I I oh, 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 good oh, 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 so now you know how important it is. I was just testing y'all. I was just testing. I was just seeing if you knew. All right, come on, Shaheen. I bet you don't know. All right, rectifier. Everyone knows this, right? That's right. All the rectifiers. That's right. Easy. Right, that's Miss Padilla stuff. We don't, sure need, we, we don't need that. We don't need that. Let's move on. All right. Let's see. Who are we on? Charles, we're on you, I think. Yes. Let's see. This is about the radiograph 
was taken without a grid and then repeated with an 8.1, which should be five. Mm -hmm. Re um, grid correction back, right? Well, one <laughs> milliampere seconds need to be in order to obtain the same energy sector. So what did they get? From 12? Nope. It's your question, Charles. It's your question to answer. No, no. You were answering everything. Yeah. Oh, damn, Jay. Damn. All right. So, what do you think, Charles? What's your thought process right now? It's freaky, 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 Friday. Right. And then it went to 8.1. Right. What is the GC of? Four, because 10 four. to one is five. 12 to one is five. Mm -hmm. 16 to one is six. Okay, so that's four. Very good. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, thank you, Melanie. I know, but I, I uh, what's it called? It was one over four, and then what else? So what's the rest? He didn't give you the rest of it. You didn't so, get anything else. You didn't so, get a beginning mass. He just if, asked what the. Right, so if you do not have a beginning mass, <laughs> right, all I was telling you is like, two times the original mass, three times the original mass, four times the original mass, oh, right? Okay, I got it. So what do you think you should do if you want to use your equation? <laughs> put one. one just over put, four, up, just put any two. mass and see what any happens, mass. right? Oh. Yeah. So let's just put one mass, right? Let's say originally we were one mass. What mass do we use with our 8 to 1 grid then? Four. Four mass. So how much did it increase by? Four. Four times. Right, so if it doesn't give you a number, just throw something in and see what happens. It's okay. So if you would have said a two, mm -hmm. it would have been uh, eight? It would have been eight mass. Oh my god, that's long. Yep. It would no be four times no matter what. Can we learn this? So it will be, you know, like be four times no matter what. Yeah, he's like, no. It will be four times no matter what. It will be four times no matter what your beginning mass is. Mm -hmm. And that's because it didn't give you a beginning mass. So if you just plug in a number, it should still come out to be the same. Correct. Mm -hmm. Very good. So four times the mass. All right. Let's take a 10 minute break here. Please be back at 121 and we'll continue our review. Can I please? 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 Let's take our seats, please. Uh, there you go. The picture. <laughs> you sure? Because you sure you angle right. I angled <laughs> right. I saw my picture. 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 I saw my yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, quiet down, everyone. Quiet down, please. Order, right? Hold on. Order. Oh, so you're the one that breaks the. Okay. Let's see. Janelle, what is your equation? Four times the original So um, you're saying that when the phosphor layer first interacts with the X-ray photons, it is going to release a latent image. Hmm. Hmm. That were light photons, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, so based on the way this question is worded, because it's asking about <coughs> releasing something, when do we release the latent image? When does the latent image get let go? When the laser, the laser. Right. When we actually read the image inside the plate reader. So latent image doesn't sound like uh, such a good answer to me. Huh? 
um, X-ray photons. Does the phosphor oh, release X-ray photons? Yes. No. 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 That's right. You have to close all your tabs. So yes, we have electric. We have an electrical signal now, and we have light photons. Um, the phosphor right isn't really producing an electrical signal. That's our TFT, for example, or our photocathode. Or photoconductor, sorry, or photoconductor. So light photons is actually going to be our best answer here, right? Because we said when X-rays interact with the phosphor, right, the electrons get excited, they jump up to which band? Conduction band. And then some of them get stuck up here, right? They fall into the electron traps. Some of them are able to escape and drop back down. When they drop back down, what do they release? Light. Light. The light photon. Yeah. So I do believe light photon is going to be our best answer here, fingers crossed. Yeah. All right, very good. Okay. So just remember, right, not all of our electrons are going to get trapped in that conductive layer. About how many get trapped? Do you remember? About half of them, about 50% will get trapped in the conductive layer. So our 1% was converted electron into the Okay, let's see. I need my phone. It's not going to fit you. Another heat unit thing. It's not going to fit. Oh, it's the... Electronic medical record. This is not taking care of now. Now, okay. Intensifier 2, that's plural. Let's get that for now. Ah, all right, Cody. You yeah, would please. Uh, we'll just see the following factors will result in improved spatial resolution. Increase focal spot size, everyone. Increase focal spot size, you said? Yeah. It's a little slow. SID improves spatial resolution. Uh, there won't be as much magnification. Okay, yeah. less magnification. Very good. Less magnification, less um, area of um, unsharpness. Great. Why would increased focal spot size improve spatial resolution? Because it's decreasing the amount of unsharpness. That would be present. Mm -hmm. I guess. Because, like, if you widen it, right, isn't mm -hmm. there more on sharpness? Or am I mm -hmm. just what? Yeah, so if you widen the focal spot size, it will be more unsharp. Yeah. But no. increasing the size is widening it. Oh, yeah, it's decreasing it. So, yes, we would actually want to decrease our focal spot size. So, yes, Regan. Sorry, I was just wondering about the SID. So you can try this yourself if you get your flashlight. Here, let's turn off the light. Uh, so if you have a flashlight here, right, take your finger, don't put it directly on the table, leave it a little bit off the table, right? And then move your light back and forth. And when you get really close, you actually notice you can see a double shadow of your finger. All right, or if you want, you can come over here and take a look at my finger here. I'm sorry, no, I'm just, I'm sorry. He's um, like, yeah, you got your phone's charging. Your phone's charging? Wait, if you get closer, you see a double? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you get closer, you, you can actually see a double shadow. I see double when I zoom out. When you zoom out, there should be a nice sharp edge on your... So when I say double shadow, right? None. If you take a look at the edge, 
you should be able to see like your edge actually kind of doubled. So if you want to see what I mean, come over here and take a look. Here, let me go. Come on, Sam. Bring me out. Come on. Here, I'll come. All right, so take a look at the edge of my finger here. You see how that's a single line? Now, when I come closer, you see how you can actually see two lines right here? Right? That's the edge right there. That's the unsharp area of unsharp. Okay, so now you can see how that's a single line. It goes away and then shows up with so look at the edge of my finger right now. No, down here. So I take it closer. And you can see that shadow stuff. Right here? Yeah. You can see the dark shadow and like a thin shadow right next to it. That's like that area of uncharted. Oh, yeah. oh, wait, it goes away. That's this idea right here, right? Wait. And you know when you're looking at it like this, when you see it, when you go out, exactly. That's when you think, that's how you have to think about this here. Right, so when you zoom out, it's just Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Spatial resolution is about how fuzzy the edges are. Okay. So the more spatial res resolution you have, the less fuzziness you have. The less fuzzy. Correct. Okay. Right, because if it's fuzzy, you can't tell things as clear, right? Yeah. Spatial resolution is you can tell things clearly. So if you can see things more clearly, that means you have less fuzziness. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You have high spatial resolution. High spatial resolution. Contrast does not play a role in sharpness. Remember, uh, brightness and contrast were our visibility factors. Things like magnification and distortion, those were our sharpness factors. All right. Let's see. Ooh, all right. Um, Jay, here's a good one from chapter 10. Go ahead and read this out for us. The values below were recorded from four different X-ray imaging systems. Which of these values represents the highest level of recorded spatial resolution? I would say 21 hertz per uh, millimeter. Okay. And so why did you choose the biggest one? Or why did you choose 20? Because it's asking for the highest level of recorded spatial resolution. Mm -hmm. So and I find that. Having 20 line pairs in one millimeter would show you more detail than having 14 line pairs in one millimeter. All right, good. That's correct. And so that's the definition, definition of the system. Line pairs per millimeter. Line pairs per millimeter, right? So on one x ray system, you can only see 14 line pairs in a single millimeter, right? 
If you try to add 15 line pairs or 16 line pairs, suddenly they get blurry and you can't see them anymore. Right? So the spatial resolution isn't as good. If you have something that can show you 20 line pairs per millimeter, nice and clear, then that's gonna be the better one, right? Yeah. Now sure, at 21, 22 it gets blurry, but it's still better than getting blurry at 14 or 16 or 18. 20 is our best spatial resolution. So in this case, these are how many lines you can see clearly, right? Yeah. Well, in one system, you can only see up to 14 lines clearly. Once you get above 14 lines, they start getting fuzzy. But on the 20 line system, you can see up to 20 lines clearly. Oh, okay, okay. Does that make sense? So since you can see more stuff clearly, better spatial resolution. All right. Um, so, Shamika, 22 here. Uh, an X-ray is function for the level of the detective dynamic range may result in So above the dynamic range. Um, um, saturation artifact? Saturation artifact with a question mark? <laughs> Excessive control. Okay. So if we're above the dynamic range, what does that mean about our exposure? Excessive. Yes, overexposed. So yes, that would be saturation. What if we're under the, the dynamic range? Quantum noise. Good, underexposed, quantum noise. Great job. Oh, you guys are nailing this. So, we can look to fast. Some of us. All right. Since I just fast, please. It's a please that previous one that was so fast, I was already. You have to move on right now, Sindhu. Okay, compared oh. to the central axis of the X, X ray beam, oh. the end. Okay. Is this the end of your Do you want me to read? Because I don't know the answer. Is this the hundred percent? No, this is pure E2. Let's see, AEC, okay, this is something you cover with Ms. Bonilla. Let's see. Okay, let's do this one. This one is chapter 11. When a 400 milliamp range station is used, which of the following exposure time would be needed to produce 80 MA? I mean, math. So 400 milliamp range is okay. <coughs> Point five. So how did you get 0.5 seconds? So I divide. Divide what? 400 MA divided by half. So if you do 400 divided by 80, what do you get? Five. Oh, that's right. You get five, Or you can multiply all those numbers by math, MA, and M until you get it. Yes. You got yes. the brute force approach. Zero point two. This one, point two? Yeah. So how did you get point two?
How did you get point two? What did you do to get point two? Um, so I cut it half. I guessed it. You guessed? Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at this question. I just don't remember. Once again, here we have. Did you hear me? Remember, this is our mass equation is what? M A times S times S equals mass. Mass. <laughs> Do we have M A? Yes. What is it? Four hundred. Four hundred. Do we have S? No. No. Do we have mass? Yes. What is it? 80. 80. So we're trying to find our unknown here, right? Yeah. How do I get this by itself? Divide both sides by 400. So both sides divided by 400. And so 80 divided by 400 equals 0 0.2 seconds. So your guess was correct. So you need to know the process. <laughs> Great, let's see. Next. <laughs> ah, Samantha. I have him. Uh, let's see, which of the following are not used in direct capture digital radiography uh, DR systems? Uh, let's see, Dells, uh, CCDs, plate readers. Um, oh, it's going to be plate reader. Plate readers. Where do we see plate readers? Uh, CR. CR, very good. Now, there is, um, I do have a bit of an issue with this question because I do think there is another answer that is also incorrect, which is CCDs. So. <laughs> no. Because he's, I guess I can he's getting off. <laughs> oh. Make sure you put okay, Wilson Fun. Okay. That's hilarious. <laughs> you know what I thought of when you said that? <laughs> Castaway. No, put Sincerely Mr. Fun. So it has more power to you. Okay. Good, but, good job. So, John. Hopefully this. All right. A nice definition question. Image receptor exposure is defined as the image. Uh, option A. What the amount of A? radiation striking the image receptor. So exposure is the amount of radiation striking the image receptor. So it's not about the sharpness of the edges of the image? No. Well, in that case, what does this refer to? Post processing. The amount of sharpness on the edges of the image. What property does that describe? Spatial resolution. Spatial resolution. Sharpness, visibility. Good. Visible differences in brightness levels in the image. What is this? Visible differences in brightness. Oh, contrast. Levels. Contrast. Good. Amount of magnification. Full ID. Just magnification. Oh. Right, but good. Exposure is about number, right? Quantity for the amount of radiation. All right. Very good. Right. And then Shaheed. The practice of an image on a viewing monitor is, as, is the result of uh, monitor of function, image receptor exposure, tissue composition, part thickness, the right piece. Right. I think this is 
kind of a trick question. Like limits of the image on a green A monitor function. Very good. So remember, when we look at our chart, brightness is not affected by our exposure factors, right? <coughs> Why? Because in digital, we have our pre-processing to make all the brightnesses at the correct level. So then how bright does it show up on the monitor? Well, it depends on the monitor. So the brightness of the image on the monitor is a result of the monitor, right? The monitor function. So what is the luminance level of that monitor? Right. Remember you said the, uh, the computer that the doctor might have mm -hmm. would show differently from what the tech, tech would have. Correct. So it's the monitor which is... It is the monitor. Very good. All right. So now I guess it's time for me to choose random people, since everyone's had a chance. So who looks like they did not want to answer? Who's not looking at me? All right, Angelica. That's so good. All right, so AC, we'll skip this one. EMR, uh, we'll skip that one. This is legal stuff, we'll skip that. Okay, let's do this. Go ahead and read this for us, please. We are performing a mobile chest x-ray on the aesthetic patient. The milliampere seconds and kilo voltage are set as low as possible, but you still expect the image receptor exposure to be excessive for the patient's body habitus. Another way to decrease image receptor exposure would be to... Increasing the SID will decrease exposure. Yes. Why do you think that? Because it's further. Mm -hmm. So what law? The inverse square law. Inverse square law, very good. So if we increase the distance, we will decrease exposure. Great job. <laughs> so if we decrease the grid ratio, what happens to exposure? It goes up. Goes up, increases. If we decrease the filtration, what happens? It increases. If we change the anode angle? Nothing. Nothing, right? Because if we change the anode angle, what does that change? Focal spot size, which is related to heating, related to spatial resolution, but has nothing to do with exposure. All right, let's see. Um, ba, 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 ba. That's more of a Mr. Donahue thing, we'll skip that. Let's see. Okay. Ooh, all right. Yeah, this is a, this is a fun one. Let's see. Um, Cody, let's have you do this one. Number two. <laughs> uh, an X-ray of a fractured hip will require a 52-inch SID using the AEC. The resulting exposure was uh, 80 mass. If the exam is repeated at a 40-inch SID, what new mass will be used by the AEC system? So right now, the only thing you need need to know about AEC is that AEC helps to maintain intensity. Um, so you use a direct. Good. So this is going to be direct square law. So, so tell me what to stick into the calculator here. Uh, 
So it'd be mass one over the mass that we don't have mm -hmm. equals um, 52 squared oh, over, I think, 40 squared. Mm -hmm. All right. So and then you would do one more. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 52 over 40 squared. So you said, oh, what is the equation again? So it'd be, um, it'd be 80 over x. 80 over x. Equals 52 squared over 40 squared. 52 squared over 40 squared. All right, so then it'd be 52 x squared equals 80 times 40 squared. So you could do 80 times 40 squared. 52 so squared is so 80 times 40 squared. Yeah. Equals 52, 52 squared. Squared. Okay. 52 squared is 27 or 2704. 2704. Oh, I'm using a calculator. Mm -hmm. Did you do that in your head, Mr. Fox? 80 times 1600? Yep, it's just 8 times 16. I don't even know why 8 times 16 is. So, <laughs> Alright, so what do we do from here? Divide both sides by 2704. Good, divide both sides by 3,704. Do that, you had. <laughs> 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 Alright, Jay, what's the answer? 319.5526. You got the three correct? Why are we taking a list of bakes? Okay, hold on. It's not 96,000. Uh, no, it's not a bitch on the eight. Oh, okay. oh, no, it's not a bitch on the eight. Okay. Oh, no, Thank you, Cody. I'm going to practice my mental math. Yeah, and that's what I got. 47. All right. Alright, great. Mr. Fuck, hey, sir, class. You know what? <laughs> All right, next question. Janelle, could you take this one, please? Frequency of recorded exposure values. Okay, so in our histogram, what is the x axis represent? So values of interest are going to be located on the x-axis, but what is the x-axis representing? Exposure values, right? So you've got low exposures, you've got high exposures. And then what about the y-axis? Frequency, right? How many of them there are? So how many pixels have this exposure value? Very good. So that is our histogram. Okay. Ooh. Um, so this isn't PRE, but let's just talk about this. My here. Res we, so results from a CT scan are accidentally emailed to the, or accidentally mailed to the wrong person. Ooh. Is this a HIPAA violation? Yes. 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 Right. Don't even need to think about that. How wow, dare you? Right. No sending from yes, right? it's a HIPAA violation. That's right. <laughs> or is it a mistake? Then? They could sue, yes. Even if it's a mistake, yes. Okay. Let's see. No. Yeah, let's go over this one instead. Okay. 
I apologize. You're the last one to talk. So you're, you're uh, yeah, I know, and I know you're gonna come back to me. <laughs> okay. It's going to be mask one over mask two. Mm -hmm. uh, what would it be? GCF over one? GCF? GCF. I mean, uh, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me. Mask. It's direct, but I don't, I can't remember. Direct square law. Yeah, that's not I remember. Well, what other information do you have aside from that? I have my inches. Good. So that's. Uh, Nice. Blank. So oh, D. Oh, S I. If D works, D okay. resistance. Which D? D1 over D2. Good. But is it just D1 over D2? Square. 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 There we go. D22. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right, great. So, what is our mass one? Uh, 125. What is our mass two? X. Yes. What is our D1? 40. 40. What is Over our D2? 36. 36. Great. Then just need a square piece. Uh, square. Yeah. All right. So let's see. 40 over 36. Why can't you cross multiply uh, 1600 times x and 125 times? You could. But I get 101.25. It's like a little different. Uh, rounding. Rounding is. If you round that, it's 102. If I round. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yes, it's 1.23456. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Oh, the baby said a hill. Yeah, so, one Good job. One one pass. Alrighty, good job. Did. I, I didn't realize that was your funny answer. I thought you were trying to give me the uh, 1600 over. <laughs> 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 no, I said, oh, 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 I so hopefully this kind of refreshed some of the stuff we talked about back in chapter 10, right? So CR, DR, um, right? Things like spatial resolution. So, and then we didn't go over the QAQC stuff, but please go back over your different test patterns as well. On 
Monday, when you come back, we will have a comprehensive review quiz. Okay, so when you come back on Monday, we will have a quiz over chapter 10 and 11. And then, if we have time at the end, we will start chapter 12 as well. How many questions? Maybe 20, 25? Yeah. Chapters 10 and 11 should be. We have not started chapter 12 yet. I wouldn't test you on chapter 12. I'm sorry. Is it multiple choice? Yes.